Hello, everybody. Uh, happy Friday and welcome to another episode of Messi & Co. Official preview of Inter Miami versus DC United. I am Ashley Silvers, as always, here with my incredible co-host, Gian. How are we doing, Gian? I'm doing great. Quick turnaround, but we're doing good. Quick turnaround, doing yeah. Good Friday, absolutely. always happy to, to have the weekend ahead of us, and it'll be a fun one with uh, Inter Miami playing tomorrow and yeah, ready to talk about the game and and what we can expect and all that sort of stuff. Hundred percent agreed. Yeah, it's been it's it, you know midweek games do that where it's the week comes you know thick and fast, so much going on. Um, and just as though we were just talking about our last game and and going over you know the what could have been, what did, etc. We're already on to a new game and a new a new weekend. Um, so let's talk about it. Uh, the first question, the question that I think is on everybody's mind, <laughs> is: Will Lionel Messi play? Will the goat play? Will, will Lionel Messi goat- play? Well, Gian, you have seen some uh, some behind the scenes action and stuff from training this morning, and so why don't you tell us what you think? Um, okay, so. Well, obviously, we'll start from the beginning. Obviously, he had an, uh, a knock in the 40th minute, um, the prior game, which I believe was, who was that against? Um, it's slipping Montreal. my mind right now. Against Montreal. Um, in the 40th minute, he went in. Uh, he went to the ground. He came out. Then he went back in. He played the rest of the game. So he looked pretty good. Then we see him at the Hard Rock having fun. He looked good as well. Um, then, unfortunately, he misses uh, Wednesday night's game. But apparently, he did practice fully yesterday. Uh, so that was good. He had a, you know, it's not like he had any individual training or anything like that where he wasn't part of part of the team. So that looked really good. And then Tata Martino today said that everything was going to be dependent on how he felt after today's training This that happened this morning and that they were going to make the decision after that and that he was fairly optimistic that he was going to be able to play on uh, Saturday. So tomorrow. So I, from what I've seen, think that he's going to play. Unless again, it's just them, you know, throwing smoke like they have. It's not. It wouldn't be the first time Inter Miami does that. They've done that before, where they say that they're going to wait for the last couple of hours before making a decision, and then we come to find out that they actually knew a week before that he was just not going to play that week. Yeah. So we, it's, it's tough to tell with Inter Miami. But if you're just reading what's in front of you, it very much looks like he should be available, especially knowing that he's going to be leaving within the next few weeks to join. In, uh, Argentina camp for Copa America, knowing that the uh, difference in points between us and second and third place in the East standings has dwindled down to one point and that every game from now until Copa America is going to be very important having Messi on our side. So everything points to he's going to play. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you can see in the title of this preview, uh, will Messi play still in first place? Inter Miami are still in first place right now. Uh, in the East, and and like we've mentioned so many times on episodes in the last few weeks, that when Messi leaves in a few weeks, and also by the way, that can include Matias Rojas now, that can include Luis Suarez, uh, you know Diego Gomez, depending on his uh, rehabilitation, are all big players who we could be losing. Yeah. So every point matters, and uh, to your point, saw videos of him training this morning and, and he looks normal. And I, I mean, you know, you don't know for sure. Like maybe there is something that we don't know behind the scenes, but um, I feel pretty, pretty confident he's going to play. It's like in retrospect, it's un- understood why he didn't play Wednesday, that that was the game that they wanted to rest and and like not, not test it. But I think home against um, a somewhat struggling DC United team uh, is a perfect way to get him back in and and get the three points so yeah i i think i mean look like we really don't know as much as we want to we don't know but if you know if i was a betting man if i were to guess when we're both there tomorrow and we get the team sheets I, i'm pretty sure it's going to say Lionel messi in the starting lineup yeah yeah guaranteed i as we know anytime messi is uh healthy and feeling good he wants to be on the field one of the things that we do know is just that he's obviously prioritizing copa america but Again, just based off of what we've seen, it, it, I think it's highly improbable that he won't play. But, it, you know, people like to ask, and obviously it makes sense. You know, is he going to play or is he not? You typically, to your point, won't know until those sheets come out 
uh, right before an, an hour or so before practice. I mean, before the game. So, uh, but they very much need him. We saw yeah. the game on on Wednesday that uh, against Orlando, the team looked completely different without him. Um, so, it I think it's very important to have him on the field, and Inter Miami is going to be much better for it if they have him on uh, on Saturday night. Agreed. Um, a hundred percent agree. I think we'll, you know, we'll see, but, but I, I feel good about it. Um, outside of Messi though, you know, a, se- a segment we like to do with these previews is team updates and someone who will not be on the field tomorrow, but we got pretty good news about this morning is midfielder Federico Redondo, who has been out for over eight weeks or maybe 11, at least eight weeks. Probably out. a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. With um, obviously a knee injury he suffered uh, in during, during the uh, CONCACAF Champions Cup run we were going on um, and we have missed him dearly, been wanting him to come back. And yeah, it's uh, why don't you tell us what we, what we learned? Well, so it's, it's funny that uh, Federico Redondo little by little over social media has been dropping hints of his, uh, hopefully soon return and uh it was finally confirmed now by tata martino in today's press conference uh, during training he was asked by some of the reporters as to the availability of federico redondo is it a matter of days or is it a matter of weeks that was a question and happily uh tata martino did say that it is a matter of days not a matter of weeks so while i don't think it's going to be tomorrow i i do think Matter of days certainly makes it seem like he will be available for next week's match. So not this one, but next week. And we know yeah. that that's going to make a huge difference for this team, especially in the midfield where, you know, at certain points we've seen a kind of a lack of creativity, right? And that's mm-hmm. something that Redondo brings. Not only does he bring uh, a lot of skill set on the defensive side, but he also brings the that playmaking ability that's very needed on this team and that this team is very dependent on especially when you're missing guys like Diego Gomez especially when Messi is missing games that's a key component of this team that really is lacking and then when you have a guy like Matias Rojas now on the team that can do some playmaking as well but you want him to be also focused on the offense that connection between the midfield and the offense um can't always go through Busquets. There has to yeah. be other players that can enable that. And man, as soon as Federico Redondo makes his way back to the team, it's going to be huge. Yeah, hundred percent. It'll be interesting to see once he's available and ready to go, what will Tata do in terms of that sort of midfield front three yeah. breakdown? Like, will it be uh, Rojas, Redondo, and Busquets? Will it be uh, Redondo, Busquets, and Gressel, and, and Matias Rosas is left wing, and Robert Taylor's on the bench? I don't know. There's a lot of different options, and so it will be interesting to see how that plays out. But someone we have really missed, and who is because I don't think he's going to go to uh, Copa America coming off of the injury. I guess we don't know a thousand percent, but I don't think he is. Um, and we can certainly use him when we have obviously some others that are gone. So. Uh, happy to have him back in the fold. We'll see how that looks in the next couple of weeks, but um, certainly great to have him back. And like we said, Jordi Alba most likely going to start. Seems to be back and good. Everyone else seems fit. No, no other new knocks. I don't think. Um, so yeah, it should be it should be a strong lineup tomorrow. Yeah, agreed. I, I think that you're going to have more than enough to beat this DC United team, um, you know, during our next segment of the tail of the table, get into a little more into that, but this team had enough to beat Orlando. I, I, I thought, but yeah. now more so than ever, they have more than enough to beat DC United. So, and, and there's also history there where, you know, um, again, we'll talk about it in our next segment, but this team looks good. It looks good. And it's nice to have some of these guys on the horizon, getting ready to make their way back to this team. And, We need it. I think a healthy Inter Miami team is unstoppable. I think that that's what's hindered this team the most up to now. They've done well. They're in first place still. I think that the difference in the standings would be much larger if this team was fully healthy and didn't have to deal with all of these injuries. So the more guys that come back, the better for this team. And think about that. That we've been on a seven game unbeaten streak with having at least three major injuries at once. So think about if we didn't have that. So we've had no Redondo, 
no Jordi Alba, no Diego Gomez in that oh. within that seven game unbeaten streak. It's pretty, and you know, showing that that with, at full strength, there's a lot of possibility. But to your point, next segment, tale of the tape. Uh, we have to talk about who we're playing and what that game's going to look like. We're playing DC United, um, a game or rather a team that we played earlier in the season away, and that was during Messi's injury. But it is when we had Redondo and Gomez, uh, and we won that game away, uh, fairly in part to Luis Suarez having two fantastic goals at the end of game. One that was like an off-balance, left-footed chip shot, basically, top yeah. bins. That was insane. Um, and, you know, DC's kind of had an up-and-down season. They obviously they have Christian Benteke as their – starting at their starting forward and uh someone who was last year was playing in the premier league who's very 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 good still and um certainly have threats so it'll be interesting to see how that game goes what do how do you feel about it i don't know like dc is not a team i watch that often but it is a team that you see like some days they're really hot some days they're cold like i remember last week they uh uh, Christian Benteke had a hat trick and they, you know, flew and then midweek they lost. And so it kind of just goes to show that they're a little hot and cold. Yeah. Well, to me, DC United isn't a team that I'm overly concerned with. They're right now, I believe um, they're a one man show. They're basically Benteke. If yeah, you look Christian at the Benteke goals, it's Benteke scored 11 goals for them. And after that, the nearest goal scorer has one. Everybody else has one goal for them. It's a right. one-man show. So I think for Inter Miami, as long as they can focus on getting Benteke out of the game, pressuring him, making sure that the defense defense is focused on him, they basically don't have to worry um, about in, uh, DC United on the offensive end. Same thing when we played them. You know, we 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 played them and we won. What was it? Three to three to one. One three to one. Yeah. 3-1, and that was a game where we didn't even play with Messi. Messi didn't play that game. Um, so And Suarez still... didn't start, remember, he yeah. came off the bench. Exactly. So I think that that kind of shows some history there where we can kind of bank on that and say whether Messi plays tomorrow or not, there should be no excuse for Inter Miami not to come out with the win, especially at home. You know, Inter Miami's just – lost their five game uh winning streak but they're now able to extend their unbeaten run to seven matches in league uh, and mm -hmm. not, not in league and all, all together because they did lose against monterrey so they're right. they're able to continue that unbeaten streak and i think that they have a good chance of doing it they had their first clean sheet since their opening match against Real salt lake where they won 2-0 uh, this past uh, game against Orlando. So I think that's also something that they can take into this game and say, hey, we've got some confidence in this defense. They've shown that they've been able to get that clean sheet. They've looked better as we've progressed throughout this season. Let's go and continue this uh, good defense going into um, going into Chase Stadium tomorrow as we face this D.C. United team that isn't the best offensive team. And again, to what I mentioned earlier, as long as we can focus on one guy, I think that the goal scoring from DC United will probably not be an issue. Um, set now, plays is something, though. I think that it's a good to, to, to mention. They're very good off of set plays. He's very good off of set plays, Christian Benteke. So, you know, we've we've done much better at set play defending over the last few weeks. But, you know, we know that the defense still has sore spots here and there. So just something to look out for tomorrow is I, I think that, like you said, we will have control of the game. We should at least. And I feel good and positive about our results and what we can do and get, you know, back on the score sheet. But, you know, something that 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 the defense and the game plan certainly should be accounting for. Yeah. And we should remember right now, Inter Miami is unbeaten four games in a row at Chase Stadium. And in those four games, they've beaten their opponents uh, nine to three in goals. So they're a really good team yeah. being at home. Uh, DC United, on the other hand, is a team that really struggles defensively. They are currently, uh, it's, I'm looking here and they've scored, they've been scored on five of their last six MLS games. They have a combined 23 goals allowed, which is tied for second most in the Eastern Conference. So they're a team that gets score, scored on a lot. So our offense, again, we scored three against them last time, shouldn't have any issues scoring any goals against this team, against this DC United team. Um, they just got scored on DC United on their last game against the Red Bulls. They got scored on four times. They lost four to one. Mm -hmm. So this is a team that's not necessarily in the best state coming into this game. They're currently eighth in the East. Um, 
and and they just lost against New York Red Bull. So again, I'm not overly concerned about this, whether Messi plays or not. Um, I think that they have more than enough. But if Messi plays, I, I think it's going to be a walk in the park, and and it should because Inter Miami is the better team. There's no there's no excuses, and they're playing at home, and we can't give the same. I guess. Um, we can't say the same as it was against Orlando where they went away and they came back with a point. This is a home. You have to win. And I expect that from this team come, uh, come tomorrow. Agree. I a hundred percent agree. Yeah. It's pedal to metal. I think, like we said, there are a lot of mitigating circumstances against Orlando. I think we should have won and it was disappointing that we did not but understanding it was midweek, it was away. It's against your biggest rival. Messi didn't play like, you know, yeah. all those things are only human. They're fair, you know, feelings to have. This game, we should 100% win. And with that in mind, um, it's our favorite segment of the week. It's our predictions. It's time for the Stradamuses to come out and play. <laughs> um, and, you know, the last couple of games, no one's really been right. You know, as soon as we started, yeah. as soon as I said, we'd start calling people comments out, uh, scores have been all over the place. So uh, this will be an interesting game. I think we all feel pretty similarly about how we're hoping it's going to go, how Inter Miami should have the advantage hopefully with Messi playing. Um, but what are you, what are you thinking, my friend? Um, I am thinking that it's going to be, uh, as we say in Spanish, uh, goleada. It will be, there will see a lot of goals. I think that, I think that Inter Miami is going to continue this trend of the clean sheet. I think this, this defense liked not getting scored on for only the second time this season. I think that they're going to go in to Chase Stadium and try to prove a point and say, we can do this twice in a row. This wasn't just a lucky, you know, one-off game. We're a good defense. And I think Messi's going to play, and I think this team is going to be firing on all cylinders. I think we're winning 4-0. I think it's going to be a 4-0 game. I really do. We scored three goals without Messi the last time. And this time, if Messi plays, I think we're, we're scoring at least one more. And I think it's 4-0 on this one. Wow. I'm I'm close, but not exactly. I am going to say the same score that they just lost to. I'm going to say 4-1 um, mm -hmm. because I agree with you in the sense that I think we will score goals and I think it will be an open game and that um, especially if Messi plays, you know, we will be controlling those kind of things. They don't have a great defense, but I'm going to, you know, I've watched enough uh, Premier League and enough to know that like I, I wouldn't bet against Benteke not getting one goal. Like I, I wouldn't surprise me if he got a goal. So I, uh, I'm going to say four one, but what we both agree with is that it should be for the most part, um, a good victory for inner Miami, but you know, that is, uh, something well, that we wish and don't always see. <laughs> Benteke, well, Benteke didn't score when we, they won, when we beat them three, one. So I don't think, I, I think we're going to look again. It's a one man show. You lock Benteke down, there's nothing to worry about with this team. Benteke scored 11 goals. So we'll see. I think that that's the difference. You you think Benteke is going to get his? I think Miami is going to do a good enough job on Benteke. So that's what remains to be seen. That'll be the key factor. Can they yeah. lock Benteke down? That'll this be the Benteke key off. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Benteke, Benteke. I, we, I just now I'm saying the name too much that it's like not sounding like a real word to me. I've said his <laughs> name too many times in this. In this, but yeah, no. Uh, to your point, it'll be. It, look, here's the thing though, and this what's this is what separates like great teams from good teams. This is what separates super teams from other teams. Is like in situations like this when it's a home game. You know, you're coming off of a draw. You you want to show everyone you're playing against a team that has a poor defense, just lost. Like, can you not only win, but win convincingly? We've done it in a few games in the past. But look, Montreal, we were down 2-0. Yes, we won. Orlando tied no goals. That's, a, that's not a great trend after the four games before it where we were flying. So can we get back to that? Or is it going to be like, you know, on ice and then all of a sudden we turn it on. That's what we, you know, we have to wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully I, well, I they that, will. I think that's part of what uh, makes a good team. And, and those are habits that you want to create early on right now in the season before you get into the playoffs. If you're able to continue your high performances and not have these lulls yeah. along the way where because you're missing one player or because you, you know, a lapse of concentration, you're giving up two early goals. Like those are, those are, 
bad habits and things that need to be fixed now. And we're early on in the season where that's still not necessarily a concern yet, but you want to get all of this fixed and, and taken care of and make sure that you have your 100% concentration on the game from minute one. So you're not giving up, you know, silly goals or none of that. And then again, knowing that you have enough on the field where you can get a good result and not go into the game saying, okay, we're missing this guy. We're missing that guy. Um, and you know, and it's not just that guy in this case, it's messy. It's the, the best place, the best player in the world. But if oh, you're, that guy. If you're missing, yeah, if you're missing one player that shouldn't, there might be a small drop off, but not enough where yeah. the confidence isn't there, and where you 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 always want to say next man up. The best teams do that. Next man up, we've got enough, um, and I think that right now, again, we we have a chance to get back to a dominant Inter Miami team, and yeah, I think it'll be a great. This is game. a good get right game. Yeah, it's a good get right game, and yeah, to your point, look, we have at least I think three more games that we should be winning all three, getting nine points, hopefully getting even more goal differential before we start having to worry about Messi, potentially Suarez, Ru, uh, Ru, Redondo, maybe Rojas, all these people like not knowing if they will or will not go, not knowing when they'll go to camp, et cetera. Um, we have to win these three games. There's like no question about it. There's no doubt that we need to just completely turn it on and and you know show the dominance again. Which I think we can do, but it'll it'll be exciting, um, and and we will be there to give all the live coverage. Yeah, I, I think right now it's really important because you've got Cincinnati, and New York, right on your butt. You know, you've yeah. got them on your butt, and you have one game more than them. And then Cincinnati, for example, has a pretty good schedule over the next few games that they can allow them to gain a lot of points. So I think that that's going to be really important. And then the same thing for New York. New York is right behind Columbus and I'm looking at New York's schedule and New York is going to be facing, uh, they face Orlando, they face Charlotte, um, and then they face New York city. So there's definitely an opportunity for them to really gain some good points there. So I, I think every game is going to be important as we move forward. And, and again, to the same thing we've talked about a bunch of times, uh, five to six games without Messi. So you got to take take care of business right now while you have him. Agreed. Um, let us know in the comments, one, if you think he's going to play, two, who you want to see start, and three, what is your score prediction? If you get your score prediction right, and if you even get the goal scores right, uh, you'll be shouted out as the Stradamus of the week. We haven't been able to do it, obviously, because we, the scores have been a little, <laughs> a little funky, but... Let us know what you think. We love to hear from you. We love to know, uh, you know, if you agree with us, if you disagree, what could be better, all those things. And so, you know, as always, please make sure you're following us on Twitter slash X at Messi and Co. Especially when we have these home games that me and Gian will be at. We do a ton of live tweeting. We put content, things that are happening in real time, uh, polls, wanting to hear from you, all of those stuff that it, it makes it such a great experience. We get to interact. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube, Five Reason Sports. Make sure you have a notification bell on. Please make sure you like and comment on this video because it means so much to us and it helps us grow, helps more people see this content, keep building the community, and then make sure you're following us on TikTok, uh, Messi and Co. 5 RSN. Thank you for watching. This has been a very busy week of episodes, and uh, there's no slowing down. There, like we said, games are coming thick and fast. Copa America is coming soon. We're going to be doing a preview about Copa America in the next week or two, so look out for that too. Like we said, we're going to do some coverage about all the different groups and and what we how we see that tournament going because you know we have to be watching Messi whether or not he's playing in in pink. So uh, thank you for watching. I'm Ashley. That is Gian, and we will see you next time. See you next time.